Getting students to do their work can sometimes be difficult. In this video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 mistakes that teachers make when delivering content that reduce the likelihood that students will stay on task and do their work. And there are times when kids are disruptive or challenging because they're bored. A relevant curriculum combined with student-centered engaging pedagogy can go a long way to preventing off-task behavior. My name is Mari Amaro and I'm the principal presenter at The Highly Effective Teacher. I'm a teacher and I've been working with students and supporting teachers for over 30 years. I'm passionate about teacher wellbeing and I combine research and experience to provide strategies that improve teacher wellbeing, especially practices that take no extra time, that can actually give you back time by working more effectively. I love coaching teachers so that they thrive in the teaching profession not just survive. Improved teacher wellbeing means improved student wellbeing, and that contributes to better academic and social outcomes for all your students. If you'd like to learn more about teacher wellbeing, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you receive notifications of all our videos. When you subscribe, that helps to support the channel. It means that we can keep making these videos to get the information and support out to more teachers. Do you have students who won't do their work? or who do the minimum of what's expected, you're not alone. And there may be some simple changes that you could make to your practice that would help to engage your students more and ensure that they're motivated and inspired in your class. Avoid these 10 mistakes that teachers make, or even avoid one of them, and you can change the outcomes for you and your students. The top 10 mistakes that teachers make with learning and teaching. Number one, they give students boring work. Making the tasks and learning relevant and engaging is your job. And sometimes that is very challenging. But when students are asked what they expect from their teachers, they overwhelmingly ask for a teacher who A, doesn't yell, B, is on time, and C, doesn't give them boring work. If you want to motivate students, figure out what, it, what interests them, and use that to link it to prior knowledge or student background. Number two, the second mistake teachers make is doing the same thing over and over. When teachers use variety to engage their students, the teachers feel energized as well. Try out new strategies, give students autonomy to figure out how they learn and create an excitement about the learning that will keep students engaged. And be creative in the way you present material to students. When you do the same thing over and over, you get bored with it as well, and it shows. Number three, teachers make mistakes when they teach kids things they already know, that they already know how to do. Graham Nuttall, in The Hidden Lives of Learners, discovered through his research that 40 to 50% of what teachers teach, students already know. That means that these students could actually be self-directed. We could do that by allowing them to determine when they need explicit instruction and when they can simply get on with the task. Number four, teachers make mistakes when they don't give students choice in their work. Teachers are always looking for ways to motivate their students and giving students choice in what, how, and with whom they learn is a great start. Consider using Ralph Perozo's matrices that combine Bloom's taxonomy and Gardner's learning styles to produce an inspiring and motivating unit of work. Number five, when teachers don't give students autonomy, they're missing a golden opportunity. Dan Pink, in his book, Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us, talks about his research finding that one of the things that motivate people is autonomy and autonomy means deciding what how and with whom students will learn it also means giving them some ownership over what they're doing so getting them to decide on what lessons will be and how they will be delivered number six when teachers don't use students strengths and interests they're missing an opportunity you're missing a golden opportunity when you don't identify student interests and strengths and build on them. According to Eric Jensen's Teaching with the Brain in Mind, engagement incurs, occurs 
through linking learning to emotion, so being excited about it or interested, being specific with your learning, so not general, and that means going deep rather than wide with your curriculum, and introducing novel things, which means it's not familiar, not things that they've done before. Number seven, another mistake teachers make is making the work either too hard or too easy. Have you ever heard of the Goldilocks principle? It's about finding work that is not too easy, not too hard, but just right. And it's a constant challenge to adequately address the range of student abilities and interests. There are lots of ways that you can do that by looking at differentiation for your classes. Number eight, teachers miss an opportunity when they don't build on prior learning. When you use what students already know and make the connections for them, you're making the learning process more meaningful, relatable, and more authentic and effective for students. Number nine, teachers make a mistake when they always use literacy as the mode of delivery and the mode of expression. We all know that students learn differently. And when we use reading and writing as the only way to access the information and the only way to demonstrate learning, that reduces student engagement and effective learning. So using as much variety as possible in the way you present information to students is essential. Use videos, audio, diagrams, maps, graphs, PowerPoint presentations, music, art and dance to teach, not only engages students, but also makes the learning more enjoyable and memorable. And that's for you and for your students. Number 10, teachers also make mistakes when they focus on product rather than process. The aim of education is not to have students who get all the answers correct, but to develop and encourage lifelong learning. The task of the teacher is to provide a classroom climate that emphasizes how to figure things out rather than knowing content. When you focus on thinking rather than correct answers, you're helping to develop 21st century learners who are problem solvers, creative thinkers, collaborators, and effective communicators. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy teaching.